You recently returned from New York. Uh, you were there for a big, exciting event. Can you tell me a little bit about it? It was, uh, it was exciting. Uh, it was the um, a private screening premiere of Maudie, um, the film by Ashling Walsh and uh, starring Ethan Hawke and Sally Hawkins. And um, it was a small but very select group of people there, and it was extremely exciting to be a part of it. And I mean, it's one thing to get the role that you got of Aunt Ida um, and be a part of the whole creation, but then to be invited to a private screening. How does that even register in your mind? Well, I didn't hesitate to say yes, put it that way. <laughs> Can you elaborate for us a little bit on your role as Aunt Ida? Um, well, Aunt Ida is a piece of work, you know, um, and those characters are always extremely fun to play. I mean, fun is perhaps the wrong word. They're challenging and difficult, and they're such uh, tough people. But it's really interesting to access those parts of yourself uh, to bring to the to the camera, and. Uh, to embrace it, not avoid it, at the same time not go overboard, you know. So there's, it's a tricky tightrope that you walk as an actress. Um, Ashling Walsh was the, the director, she was amazing. And she, um, con well first of all when I had the audition, I was given a week to do the audition and she sent in pictures and her vision and all these things to, to help let you do the audition, which was such an unusual and wonderful uh, concept. And uh, then I had was given the part a couple of weeks later, and I had about two or three weeks, I think three weeks to prepare. Wow. Yeah, and she and I were emailing each other. And um, yeah, she has a very clear vision, it's very artistic, very visual. And uh, that was, uh, again, another unique approach, which um, I really enjoyed. When somebody's so dead set on their vision, is it more difficult for you to get into that, that character or does it make it easier because they know exactly what they, they're looking for? Well, she was never, she was never like really, uh, she didn't have really clear perimeters for my character. So it wasn't like I was in a box, but I actually find it easier when people are very clear about their vision. Um, I, I think, you know, if they can establish this is the direction I want it to go and uh, then I know where I am. I'm not flailing around trying to guess what they want. I'm just in w on the same train track as they are. So that I think that it actually makes it easier. A Dog's Purpose was also on your on your list of credits. What was it like working on that production? I love Lasse Hallstrom. Mm -hmm. he's, he's one, extremely handsome, and two, he is such a gentleman. And w I actually filmed A Dog's Purpose in and around doing Ida. So the two of them were, uh, I, I did A Dog's Purpose for three weeks and then s went straight to Newfoundland from there to shoot uh, uh, Aunt Ida and Maudie, and then came back to A Dog's Purpose for a week and then went back to Newfoundland. So. It, they were interswirling, and it, it was really beautiful to play both of these roles. They were both parts that went from 55 or 60 years old uh, uh, in, in uh, Fran, aged about 20 years, mm -hmm. and in Maudie, I aged uh, 30 years. And so I had that experience as well, all the latex and everything um, of getting older. But they were like the opposite sides of the coin. Fran was this loving, caring, understanding, beautiful old woman, farm lady. And Ida was this difficult, controlling, self-righteous, um, you know, woman with a secret and who's done terrible things in her past. You know, I mean, it was great to have that broad spectrum and to sort of see I didn't have to live with Ida all the time because I was playing Fran at other times right so so she didn't permeate my soul <laughs> so playing the two different characters yeah. uh, while it's so refreshing in a sense is it hard to be able to switch from one character to the next um, well in Maudie Sally Hawkins was possibly the very best actress I've ever worked with so I actually found it really um, inspiring to be o on camera with her. Mm -hmm. And she's, she was in character almost all the time and I had enormous respect for what she was doing. And it, uh, she just blew my mind with her innovation and creativity.
So I found it actually very, very easy um, to be in Maudie. And in the dog's purpose, it, uh, we, the, we had already established, we, they had a week of rehearsals where, where we just got to know each other as a family, the, the family that was in the farmhouse. And, um, and we loved each other and got along very, very well. And were, we had such a good time. And I didn't feel the need to try very hard in it because I felt that she was just a, a little piece of me, the, the really nice grandma part of me. And we all have that in us. I think everybody has that, you know, idealistic, beautiful human being that's in your soul. So that was, she was easy too. So it, while, I mean, it was exhausting playing Ida, mm -hmm. a, a couple of those scenes were so intense, particularly the one towards the end of the film, which I won't talk about too much because it's a spoiler. You're, you're big into theater. You have been for years. Uh, you've been nominated for awards for theater. There's one, one play in particular where you played four characters. How does one do that? Oh, I was sick, tiring. It was tiring. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm doing part two. Like, this is Angels in America that you're talking about mm -hmm. that recently won the Jesse for Best Production, and I was nominated for um, my part in it, which was kind of surprising because I do play four characters. They're quite, they're not, they weren't huge characters. In part two, they, be, they kind of come into their own, and I played two men and two women. So that was really interesting, was to play the men. Um, I, I didn't even begin to know how to approach it, even though, you know, when I was a kid, I was sort of a tomboy, but I still, like, you know, I went, why? Why has the author, in a time when now they do sort of gender uh, blindness and, you know, all of this sort of thing, but in the days that this was written, 1989, um, that wasn't a thing. It wasn't a sort of a deal. And so I thought, why is, has this author written this woman to play these two men? And I, and I think I think I found out. I think it's a sort of like a, an archetype um, theme that goes through each of these characters, that they seem wise, but there's a certain jaundice and a certain uh, bitterness that's mm -hmm. seeped into their, um, their psyches. And I also play Ethel Rosenberg, who actually existed um, uh, before she was executed. She was, I think, the last woman to be executed in America, and she was executed for being a traitor. Um, and um, in uh, 19, well, that's my research gone out the window. But anyway, 1962 or something. And um, a and very sad story where her husband apparently stole um, or, or leaked descriptions of how to make an atomic bomb to the Russians. And she typed that up, and for that she was executed. Oh yeah. All this work that you've done, everything you've got under your belt, what's next? Well, Angels in America Part Two. We start rehearsals in August and open in September at the Arts Club. After that, I'm supposed to do a film with Bruce Sweeney. I've done a bunch of his films. I don't know if you're familiar with him. But he's a local independent auteur filmmaker, and he writes and directs and often shoots his own films. Cool. And uh, I've been part of his team for the last uh, five years, and I love working with him. A lot of improvisation, a lot of input, uh, creative input, so I really, really enjoy his stuff. It's, there, it's usually very satirical, very funny. You have a short film that uh, is yeah. going to be released pretty soon. Can you tell us about that? Uh, it's called Call from Josie, and uh, it was written and directed by Mark Sowers, who's formed a collective um, to make short films so that you write your short film and you can perhaps put it on and direct it yourself, and he'll help facilitate it and help uh, advise you to do it. But this was one that he'd written, so it was the first one that this collective has done. So there's uh, four of us, I think, producing. Um, I'm an executive producer on it, apparently. So nice. <laughs> yes. For you. <laughs> I'm also the lead in it uh, about a woman who is, uh, uh, has a terminal illness and the decisions she has to make. And it's, um, I think, very timely and very interesting. Um, I found it very moving mm -hmm. when I watched it. And I th hopefully it'll go to the Vancouver Film Festival. And if it doesn't go there, then maybe the Whistler Film Festival. I have one more question that I try to ask each of my guests. You're not wearing any today, uh, but it's normally about your socks. Um, I think socks tell a lot about a person, okay. and I'd like to know what type of socks you would normally wear. Okay, the only socks I ever wear 
are all-day socks. Do you know about those? No. Okay, so I think they were originally designed for people with diabetes. I can't bear the, um, what do you call it? What's this called? The seams. The seams. Yeah. I can't bear having seams okay. on my socks, so there's no seams. I get them at Hudson Bay, and they come in all colors, and they're sort of expensive. And I don't really like socks because okay. I prefer bare feet. Um, so that's what I wear. And is that because they're so restricting and you're just a free type of person? Uh, yeah, my, t my feet are really, um, they're divas. I have <laughs> diva feet. <laughs> that's fair. And I don't think I'm a difficult person, but my feet are very difficult, very demanding. I know that feeling. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I definitely do. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs>